All right, we're back with another GBC module review. We have two different modules from the YouTube channel, Nonsense Wars. And if you didn't know, there are two contributors to that channel, so we're gonna be looking at a module from each of them. Uh, first, we have the Dozer Linkage module. Um, I liked it so much, I built it twice. Um, <laughs> this is built by Jay, as he's known on the channel, or 4Bar Linkage Online. And this is a pretty simple module, but it's very just satisfying. I really like it. Um, over here, we have the Not Scissor Lift version two. Um, if you've watched Nonsense Wars for any amount of time, uh, you've probably noticed they do a lot of not videos. <laughs> I've jokingly referred to them as Nonsense Wars. So while there are a lot of scissor lift modules out there, this is not. <laughs> um, and I always enjoy that, just having a new take on popular ideas and doing things differently. That's always really cool. Uh, this one is designed by Pico Han, as he goes by online. Uh, and you'll notice you have, you know, the yellow and black pieces here. And on this module, it's white and red. And that's actually generally how they will differentiate the models, the modules on who designed them. Uh, so this one is, is actually kind of <laughs> misleading, but that's just the color scheme I chose. Uh, so let's get into it and uh, I'll tell you about my experience with these two modules. All right, so we're gonna look at this version first because I'm gonna show you one of the modifications that I made. I'm not sure if I've built something wrong. I mean, I, I don't know what I could. I just checked the instructions. It looks right, um, everything through here. But let's watch as this goes down. You see that the teeth <laughs> of the dozer bucket seem to get caught you know, on this piece here. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, it may just be because I've, as I've moved the module, it can flex in this direction. So if I kind of do that number, let's see if that fixes it. That seems better. Um, what I ended up doing is I, I raise this up by one plate. So I, I guess that probably does bring this out of spec. Um, no, actually that that's that should be right. This is you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bricks, and then one, two, three plates, so that's ten. Um, so that actually brings it right into spec, I guess. Oh well that's <laughs> anyway, so that's what I ended up doing and that so if the module is getting moved around and things, uh, that generally makes it where the bucket doesn't catch on the lip there. So we'll we'll switch over to this version since this is the official color scheme, uh, mostly. Um, I didn't replace these linkage pieces here with the one by three thin, thin lift arms um, in yellow, I believe he used. And then this is actually very light bluish gray <laughs> uh, that came with like the NXT set, um, those kind of things. So it's not actually white. I have white ones now. I had to order some, but I, I haven't replaced them. And again, I've mentioned this before, but if you haven't watched the official video of how a four bar linkage can be prototyped and designed on paper, it was incredibly interesting to me. Um, like I've said before, I'm more of a electrical kind of uh, person than, than mechanical. So that, that was absolutely fascinating to get that insight. So we will run it. I've been told the direction of the motor kind of changes the bucket a little bit with whether it's a quick release or a longer load. I don't really see the difference. Um, so this is in one direction and let's go in the other direction. I don't really see it, but I'm not gonna say, say that it's not there. <laughs> so we can go ahead and run some, whoops. They can overshoot this a little bit. So he's got the minifig um, stand there. That's what kind of, you know, it, it should help with them not overshooting too much. Um, Sometimes it helps more than others. It really depends on what module is feeding this. So I've often used Fernando Q's return module and it sits over it and then drops them directly down. Uh, so I didn't have that problem, but depending on what's feeding it, you could have issues. Um, so beyond that, it's been very reliable for me. Uh, one thing I noticed is that this uh, 
axle joiner is pushed out just a little bit there. And I'm guessing that's something you should do because on this one it's pushed further in and there's definitely a lot of uh, ABS dust uh, building up there. Um, I have thought about, since I have two, I could extend this axle all the way through and power both modules from one motor. That is something I, I think I'll probably do after a while. Um, and then I could either sync them up together or have them out of sync. Um, whatever kind of looks better aesthetically. And just like many of the modules we've covered before, there is a mod uh, of this by Dunes on the Brick Engineering channel. And I haven't looked at it too closely, but uh, I imagine there's probably some cross beams here to make it a little more rigid and those, those kind of things. Um, but I, I do like the aesthetic of this module already. Um, it's, it's simple, but satisfying. You get these little yellow accents. Um, I actually had to order these <laughs> specifically because I didn't have any yellow uh, of, of this piece. This is the, oh Lord, I just, <laughs> just mangled it. Um, I didn't have any yellow, so I had to order those. Right, let me put this back together. And there's a couple of little details that definitely help this out. Like you'll notice here, uh, the slope here actually locks the wire in place. And the reason that is important is because there is a counterweight here. And this is has a tendency to get caught in the wire if you don't have it pulled to the side just like this. Um, I have gone out the other direction here with it. And as long as you get it right uh, with that slope holding it in place, it's fine. Um, but that's, that's how this piece goes up and down. Uh, it's getting caught on something here. Um, it's from that counterweight. And if you've watched uh, videos on the Nonsense Horse channel, you've probably seen a lot of examples of counterweights. Uh, they seem to be counterweight enthusiasts, which I'm here for it. Uh, <laughs> there's some pretty elegant solutions uh, involving counterweights on the channel, so be sure to check it out. Okay, so this is the Not Scissor Lift version two. And this is, was a very fun module to me. The only thing you'll have to watch out for really is this output section here is going to drop from a, a fairly high point. So whatever module this is going to feed into, uh, that's going to be something you have to think about. I've often used two different modules from Pinwheel, either the Slope Stepper Reservoir module or Emmett's Crane version 2, because they have a nice big input bin where these balls aren't going to bounce around too bad. Um, they generally stay in the input bin. Um, but if, it, if you're dealing with a small target, uh, you might have issues. So we'll see how it does. This is going to be, you know, the standard eight by eight. So let's see how it, it does. I'm going to have a little bit of space here just to let them roll right into it. So let's get it running. All right. I try not to feed too many because it, it's going to be able to pick up quite a bit um, at once. Missed one so far. That's not too bad. <laughs> Oop. I guess that's me not having it lined up right. <laughs> okay. All right, we got it. All right. Well, that that was kind of on me there. <laughs> but like I said, if you have if you're feeding the right module, you won't really have too many issues with it. Or you may need that height to go into some kind of custom non-compliant module, I guess, or just have this as as a section in your in your module. So again, we have a lot of examples of counterweights here. Um, so you'll notice this gate here, and then you also have the gate here. And of course, under here, we have a counterweight. <laughs> um, in the instructions, it doesn't show the rubber on the tire. I found that it worked a lot better with the rubber. Um, and then these are fine without it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and Move it here so you that's how this gate works and these these seem to work very well i very rarely have a ball skip over the gate or any issues like that 
I like the use of the, the springs here on, on each side for just to get this just right on this linkage. And one thing I will note uh, that was very important in the build process. Oh, wow. This, this axle is, oh, wait, is it supposed to be like that? Maybe, I'm not sure what's going on there. And this axle sticking out a little bit. Uh, but a very important thing here is you have this sleeve uh, transmission piece. Uh, and that does make it easier if you need to mess with this manually at all. Um, but in the instructions, he has the red gear here, which unless there are multiple versions I'm not aware of, this sleeve does not mate with. Um, so I would have built all this and it wouldn't have worked at all because in order to slide into it, <laughs> they have to match. So it will either be the other style of sleeve with the red gear or the dark gray or dark bluish gray, you know, older version of this gear, uh, with this type sleeve. So just make sure that they match and that, and that you test it before you build the whole rest of the module, because that's going to be very important. So beyond that. I haven't really had any issues with it. You know, the, I, I changed that. I put the rubber on the tire back here. That's about it. Um, and I'm just always have some awareness of what module it's going to feed into because it is from a fairly high point that it's dropping off of. Um, but you could do a series of ramps after this. You could feed into a module that needs a little more height, you know, any of those kind of things. So it definitely can come in handy for those situations. Or again, just a module like that has a very large input bin that can catch the balls. Uh, it'll work just fine. Uh, so I think that's it. Just a short, sweet GBC module review. These work very well, and I've been very happy with them. So be sure to check out the Nonsense Horse YouTube channel if you haven't already. And on that note, this is the end of the video, so have a nice day. So be sure to check out the non-